Good morning, and welcome to Grove Church. So nice to see all of you out this morning, and welcome to those who are watching us online as well. Isn't it nice to be able to see the sun and celebrate Palm Sunday together? How nice. But before we begin worship, we have a few announcements that we need to take care of. First of all, I want to announce the passing of Virginia Jacobs. She passed away on Thursday morning, and funeral arrangements have been made. Uh, there will be, she will be at the Herring um, Cargo Funeral Home, and viewing will be, or visitation will be on Wednesday, March 27th, from 5 p.m. till 8 p.m., and her funeral service will be held at the funeral home, and it will be at 10 o'clock on Friday morning. Once again, her funeral will be at the funeral home at 10 o'clock on Friday morning, and uh, there will be a reception immediately following here at Grove in Mitchell Hall. Please keep the Jacobs family in your prayers. Monday, Thursday, it should be a wonderful day here. Um, we have a very special service. It's going to be at 7 o'clock, so please try to attend. I think you'll really go back home with a lot of meaning. So uh, please try to attend Thursday, 7 o'clock. <clears throat> and then we go on. We still are taking our collections for our yard sale and the deacon's cupboard. Those are all printed in your bulletins. For you and Harper Family House, uh, this is the last time that you can bring in a donation for them. If you're interested in bringing in something for the homeless, um, there's still the bins out in the narthex. You can bring them in until Thursday night. I think that's right, wherever Helen is. I think that's right, Helen, right? And then after that, they will be done. So, um, so you're welcome to still bring things in until Thursday. And then we move on to Easter Sunday. Hooray, Easter Sunday. Yes, come and celebrate at 1030, Easter Sunday, the resurrection of our Lord. That will be an exciting time for all of us. Um, one other announcement is the bulletin in the uh, 281 uh, is listed in your bulletins as 261, but it will be 281, so uh, make sure that you know that one and we can see. Now, is there any other announcements that we need to make? No? Okay. Palm Sunday. It could be called Triumph Sunday, actually. Palm Sunday begins Holy Week, and we celebrate what is known as Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. The people were lining those narrow streets in Jerusalem, waiting to see Jesus much like we line our streets when we see a parade coming. We're very excited. Just the same way. The people were waiting and waiting and waiting. But Jesus was no ordinary king. He didn't come on a fire truck. He didn't come in a, in a carriage. He came on a humble donkey riding in this, into the gates of Jerusalem. And the people were still so excited to see him. They threw down their cloaks and wave their palm branches in the air because they had waited a long, long time. And finally the time had come. The Messiah was here. Happy Palm Sunday. Now, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We praise you, O God, for your faithfulness through the ages. You are with us as we greet the dawn of a new day. Your word guides us as we seek to be obedient. You comfort us during times of distress and judge us according to your righteousness. As you sent Jesus to fulfill your promise, you fill us with your spirit that we may know your will. As we enter the gates of your sacred place, hear now our voices as we sing our praise to you. Amen. Amen. If you are able, please stand and join me in the call of worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you that you have answered me and have found my salvation. Blessed is the one.
one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Let us worship God. Our first hymn is 268. Ride on, ride on in majesty. <laughs> Hear the words of assurance. Even though Jesus was in the form of God, he did not regard himself equally with God as something to be exploited. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. He died for us so that we might have life and approach God's throne of judgment, cleansed of our sin. In Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
please be seated. What a wonderful day it is to come and praise our Lord and Savior. Plenty of sunshine and a hint of the cool air to remind us that we are alive. What are your joys and concerns this morning? Well, my mom, she's just kind of, she's getting worse, but um, also my uh, great aunt, Ann Billings, last night, she went into um, the hospital, so she was, uh, she's staying with my uh, cousin, her daughter, but um, they, she was having constipation breathing, so she got rushed to the hospital. Okay. We want to keep the Jacobs family in our prayers. I had the joy of just arriving here at two minutes before the beginning of the so after driving two and a half hours and having a weekend plus with my two grandchildren would run me to the ground, but I had a great time with them at church, Sunday school, Easter egg hunts, and all the things you do as a grandparent. It was fun. Okay. Uh, so I have a to share as well. We apologize. We didn't see you folks last week. We were in Pittsburgh. Joshua was in another tournament in the first place. <laughs> Once again, prayers for the Jacob family. And I had a great time in Fairfax with my grandson. It's been an honor to be here this morning. And uh, I'm glad I did the thing twice of being humble to the young man over there and crying and stuff like that. I was contemplating as I was driving down the road. Christ came in and Christ came on the donkey. And all the people were worshiping and throwing their palms, waving their palms, whatever. And I was thinking, Christ being all knowing, he knew that there were the very same people that were going to send him to the cross, not even a week away. And God reminded me this morning that I was one of them. Mm. Yes, sir. And I, I think about the sacrifice that Christ made for me. Because I you know I was not born in a church. I was not always a good man. And I'm uh, I was lost and now I'm found because of the sacrifice that he made. So I just thank God that you know he loved me enough. God so loved me. Just me. If it was just me, he'd have done it. And I, and I'm just grateful. Know that, and we are fickle people. Sometimes we praise his name and the next minute we're cursing our brother or sister. And I ask God to forgive me for those times because I'm guilty as soon as I get behind the wheel of my truck. Amen. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful for Christ's sacrifice. Thank you. Okay. Let us go to the Lord and pray. Uh, just before I start, our intercession prayers. Once again, I'm asking everyone, you heard the prayers, you heard the concerns, you heard the joys. While I'm praying, please repeat those to yourself and ask the Lord to bless those who are in need of the blessing and give them thanksgiving for those who have experienced the joy. Let us pray. Loving God, your son Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey as a different kind of king. You call your followers to be different too. So we pray, Lord God, for the church, that Christians may bear the fruit of their own spirit, love, joy, peace, Patient, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Take firm root, Lord, in our lives, that we may lovingly serve and welcome all with no exception and no small print. May we live together in your love and shine as lights in the darkness to reveal 
your glory to the world. Lord, we heard you in the Garden of Gethsemane, where you experience and express your distress and anguish over what lay ahead. We pray for all who are experiencing distress, all that are lonely, those who may be anguish, all those with the virus and those at home and those who are in the hospital and those who are fearful of others, those whose jobs have vanished and those whose future are in great doubt, Lord. There are a lot of things to be concerned about, Lord. We thank you, Father, for all the efforts made on their behalf and pray that we may receive your peace and love. We pray to you, Lord God, for the palm branches and for the cross that you have to bear, for your understanding of us and in your love, you have promised not to push us away from you, but bring us closer to you. We pray for world leaders quick to stand in the limelight taking and making decisions which affect everyone in the world but slow to do the steady the steady less glamorous work to which you call them to do we pray for the world leaders who understand their role Lord to serve the people of the world that posturing will be replaced by practical action to make the difference in jockeying for position be replaced by genuine efforts to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, and to care for those who are weak and lonely. And on the cross our Lord died. And let your love be glorified because of your death, Lord God, we pray. And thank you that you were obedient even to death, and that you were raised from the death. But no one can separate us from the love that you have for us. We remember the prayers of the people here at Grove. We recall their concerns. We recall their joys our loved ones, and those who still grieve. But more than that, we will remember the prayer that gives us comfort by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive our debts, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. After Jesus has shared that last Passover meal with his disciples, he gave them a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you. And as we remember all that happened during Jesus' last days before he was crucified, let us remember that commandment and show his love to each other by sharing the peace of Christ. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Savior be with you this day. Let us greet one another in love.
Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who is he that will condemn me? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Testament reading comes from Mark. A New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verses 1 through 39. Mark 15, verses 1 through 39, on page 1582. In the word of the Lord for the people of God. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their claim. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked, are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply. And Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrection who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of Jews? Asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release their rabbit instead. What shall I do then? with the one you call the king of Jews. Pilate asked, crucify him. They shouted, why? What crimes has he committed? Asked Pilate, but they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released bear Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! And again and again, they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. And then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the follower of Alexander and Rufus was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull, and then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. 
the word of God for the people of God. <laughs> Let us pray. Father God, our Lord and Savior triumphantly entered into Jerusalem for the last time. And although there were some expecting to see a king on a stallion, he rode gracefully on a donkey. Now, Lord God, you have called your people to be diverse. You have called your people to be many. Now, Lord God, unite us in the love that Jesus Christ has shown. And Lord, we pray, we pray, Lord God, that our salvation may come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As Christians, we are painfully aware that we are involved in a battle for our souls. In this battle, we are outmatched, outclassed, and outgunned. Our enemy has had thousands of years of experience and all the time in the world to think of things to hamper our journeys. He knows every trick in the book and is the master serpent himself. There is an axiom, a saying, if you will, that says silence is golden. And under our Constitution Fifth Amendment, no one can be compelled to be a witness against him or herself in a criminal case. The prosecution cannot use a defendant's decision not to testify in court as evidence of their guilt. However, silent gives consent. And at that same time, our Constitution lays waste to an ancient maximum of common law. And from that maximum flows a widely applied legal principle, the rule of tacit admission. Let us unplug from a world that fights against flesh and blood and plug into the word of God that says that the fight is against the rules, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Our sermonic topic this morning is Silence and the mission of guilt. Silence and the mission of guilt. The Gospel of Mark, particularly verse 10, reminds us that it was envy that influenced the chief priests to rail against our Lord. They saw that Jesus was gathering a greater influence over the people and by subliminal beauty of his persona and by the fame from his miracles and the compelling power of his words alone. And hence, they, the rulers, concluded that unless Jesus was arrested and done away with their own influence, would disappear. They saw the whole world going after Jesus and therefore he had to be destroyed. On this Palm Sunday, Jesus enters Jerusalem as a famous prophet, as a king, Lord of Lord, and the Messiah. But at the end of the day, his infamously, he would hang from a cross. Our Lord encountered six tribes, three that were of a religious nature, and three that were of a civil nature under Roman laws, 
where he was found innocent but guilty in the religious trials. In all the accounts, it should be noted, Jesus does not really mumble a word about his innocence. In our text this morning, we understand the silence of Jesus as being gracious. His silence had everything to do with our salvation. His silence gives us the power today to boldly cry out to our Father in heaven. Even when we experience the pain of evil and injustice, our text is a sovereign fabric of pain, which we should approach with deep reverence and serious self-examination as we point the finger at someone knowing that we have three fingers pointing back at us. Who has not faced such an injustice in their life? I'm saying not one of you because someone has accused you of something, whether it's right or wrong. Injustice abounds in our very fallen and broken world as we understand it in the Gaza Strait. In some way, each of us has and will experience this injustice in life, whether it is racism, classism, militarism, or abuse of authority by the powers to be of some of the more visible and obvious injustice known to mankind in our world that we live in. But it is also here we will encounter the kind of injustice that perhaps each of us will encounter, which is false accusation and malice, known as slander. Who here has not face such injustice. Such injustice is hard to swallow at times rather than merely gulping it down the verbal abuse. We rather open our mouths and speak up for ourselves in self-defense. There may be a place for that but not always and sometimes the best defense is no defense at all. Sometimes silence is louder than words that can be spoken. In our text this morning, I want to remind you that our Lord Jesus Christ, the slander victim, was the solid victor. He fulfilled the prophecy of the suffering servant of Isaiah, and he was oppressed, and he was afflicted, and yet he opened not his mouth once. Like a lamb that would be led to the slaughter, like a sheep that stands before the shearer in silence, so our Lord opened not his mouth. In biblical terms, we observe this morning in the text, what we observe is the silence of the Lamb. But the silence of the Lamb in the face of horrific injustice was necessary to secure the salvation of us sinners. His silence screams his love for those who were his enemies. The silence screams for those who placed a nail in him. His silence, his silence broke the darkness at some point on the ninth hour. The righteous silence of Jesus shouts the good news of our gospel this morning. But may our silence do what the Jesus silence did for him. 
It is what we call to do in the face of religious persecution. Religious persecution. Be silent. We all have encountered the various battles in life. And I'm sure you can think of at least one right now. Maybe you're at odds with a family member or friends, or things are difficult in your workplace, or you're suffering from some type of drug addiction, or addiction, or oppression, or depression. What's important to remember is that as believers in Jesus Christ, our battle is not against the people or even ourselves. Behind all the things that are happening on the surface of our lives, behind the, all the irrevocable relational issues with our neighbors, family, and friends, our daily trials and struggle in our mind create unbound emotions that seem to seek out of us like evil, which leads me to believe we are facing a very real spiritual battle, a battle for our own soul. I know no one here wants to give their soul to the devil. If you ask any general in the military, they will tell you one of the most important things to know before you go into battle is to know something about your enemy. There is someone this morning that has been coming to church for years who will refuse to realize that Satan is a problem in their life. We have read about him in the Bible, and we knew he had a beef with Jesus. But we may not have understood the direction and the correlation between him, us, and Satan. Satan will convince us that our problems in life are simply bad luck, bad timing, or being in the wrong place at the wrong time, or with other people. They're the problem, bad people. They're just those who would stick out their feet or a leg to trip us. Rogue, I'm telling you this morning that Satan is real. And I know someone wants to deny his assistance. And the Bible tells us that he wants to steal, kill, and destroy, which is his sole purpose. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. He is a destroyer. He is one who wants to control and manipulate and accuse. 1 Peter 5 8 tells us, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Is that someone new this morning? Sometimes we have to ask and invite our Lord and Savior, Lord, keep my mind on you. There's a saying, an idle mind is Satan's workshop. As I bring this good news sheet to a close, Christians, let me appeal to you to follow the example of Jesus in your conflicts. Live blameless lives and then you can be silent rather than defensive. Be prepared to respond to personal injustice with silence. Therefore, I glorify God. But there is a time and there is a place that you can speak. And each and every one of us is going to have to stand before our Lord and say that Jesus Christ at the appointed hour. Non-Christians, 
you may not be able to identify with Paul this morning or with the corrupt Sanhedrin, but you should, like me, identify with Barabbas. We are guilty of insurrection against our Lord and Savior, against the king, that we have sought to throw off the bounds of his authority. We had a hand in his crucifixion. We helped nail him to the cross, and yet we could not even look a gaze upon him. Jesus was mocked, and he was rejected as king. And though the deviant action of all those people was enthroned via the cross, but having risen from the dead, Jesus proved he is king, and now rules and reigns graciously and intercedes on our behalf. For this reason, we should heed the call of the scripture. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth, serve the Lord with fear, rejoice with trembling, kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, for the wrath is quick. The wrath is quick. However, know that the Lamb of God will not always be silent, but also know that Sodom is not a mission of guilt. Repent and believe, and you will never need to experience equally true response to persecution, the wrath of the Lamb. I love the way the apostle puts it this morning in Romans 8.31 that says, if God is for you, who can be against you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Father God, we are thankful that we get to celebrate another festival. We get to celebrate another year of Jesus' triumph into Jerusalem. We get to celebrate, Lord, by waving the palm branches. But more than that, we are thankful for your son. We are thankful for you for coming down on high to dwell with us ordinary men. We are thankful for the blessing that you have given us through your son, Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, let us abide in unity. Let us abide in love. Amen. Our next hymn is 255, Beneath the Cross.
let us stand as the offering comes forward along with the palm as we say the doxology. <clears throat>
Now as we leave from this place, go gladly, go joyfully, go in unity, but more so go in love. And remember the one who died for us all. In Jesus' name we pray.